Hi, everybody. Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming out to the Living Dead Festival this year. Doesn't this festival rock? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Is it here? Okay. Uh, are any of you fans possibly of Chiller Theater or Day of the Dead? That's why we have Lori Cardell right here and her father, Chili Billy Cardell. You must know. <laughs> Let's see. Are you, are you nervous, Lawrence? <laughs> A little. Don't be nervous. He's my friend. Thank you, Lori. Well, we'll start out with... Um, how did you both meet? George Romero and get involved with the two films that you were involved with. Daddy, you're there first on this one. I'm first. Can you hear me? Thank you. Let's hope. <laughs> anyway, welcome. Nice having you here. We have an international meeting here, Australia, <laughs> London, etc., Turtle Creek, Slippery Rock, but anyway, nice to be here with all the folks uh, from also Russ Steiner and of course George Romero coming tomorrow, but uh, I, before I, I'm too close to the speaker. No, I'm right here. It's bigger, it's bigger. It's bigger. Anyway, uh, there, good. Uh, I was, uh, I was going to say, at my my mass, mid, uh, noon mass, after uh, Chiller Theater, I would be doing Chiller Theater on Saturday night, all the way till uh, three o'clock in the morning, then go out for breakfast, and then I would get up and Lori and Billy and my other daughter Maria, my wife, we went to a church, St. Teresa's, and I was a lecturer. And the first time I went out, the same thing happened. Just feedback. So the Lord blessed me, and I haven't shut up since. <laughs> no, the, the way George and I met, I mentioned it to a couple of today, and Russ Streiner, two of my favorite of all times. I mean, I've watched their career. I was in TV since 1952 right after college. There were three stations in, in Pennsylvania. There was one in Erie, one in Pittsburgh, and one in Philadelphia. And uh, I did radio in college and high school, but I wasn't a professional because in my business, you're not a professional till you get paid for it. And uh, I did it for experience. I had my own show every night on the CBS station. I played music on Saturdays, but I learned from some real good teachers who wrote about radio. I worked for a good station owner and a program director, and they taught me a lot. One little aside I'll say here. One little aside. This is comfortable. When I went on for the first time, true story, never before repeated, I uh, went down and I, had a, I was on athletic scholarship and I got to the station about 11 o'clock. This is the radio, DAD. I got there and, uh, I, you know, when you're young, 20 years old, I had nothing to it, you know, what the hell. So I, I go in, the man does, he was doing new sports and weather, about seven minutes, and then it was my turn. Now, I had to sit down, and when you work the board, you do it. And I, 
You had to play each record individually, not like now, but individually. So I sit down, and the uh, program director was the announcer. He says, um, stay tuned for a Bill Cardill. He gets out of the chair, I sit down, and he goes, on my back. I went, like that. It seemed like an eternity. I couldn't speak, and I couldn't turn up the knob. He reaches over my shoulder, and and I says, Hi, I'm Bill Cardill, and I haven't shut up since that, originally. Now, I met George, you know, with that, and it was in TV, I came here, and uh, I was doing a show called Children's Theater, which I created. We were on TV, NBC in Pittsburgh. I was on every night at 10, I mean, on Saturday night, 11.30. And uh, at Chiller Theater, in, in, by, I'd say about 66, I was on in 62, double feature. And uh, I, one time I got a call from Carl Hartman, my first call, he's in the movie as well. And he said, well, listen, uh, we were going to do a movie uh, in it. Uh, we'd like to have you in it. Because I did chiller movies, you know. And at that time, Super 8 was popular. And I, I did wrestling. I did every show possible on TV, live and direct. And they said, listen, don't worry about a thing. And I just didn't say, I said, I don't want to do any more movies. Well, eventually, Carl was pretty persistent. And I said, okay. It turned out I got to meet George and also Russ. And uh, the, on Saturday nights, I sometimes got out at 3 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I had half breakfast, and then they says, listen, because I had no times off. I was going to Philadelphia doing a wrestling show every other week that was national. And I really didn't have time. They says, well, listen. You come up after the breakfast. When the sun comes up, we're going to shoot you. We'll do it. Well, I get there, and my director and friend, producer, we're there. We found the place. We stayed. we got there about 5 in the morning. I've, now, I've been up since about 8 o'clock Saturday morning. And they, hey, hey, you know, I'm waking up with you. And they said, we're going to do it. As soon as the sun comes up, you're first. We promised you. I says, yeah, i got to get on and get some sleep. Well, five o'clock that afternoon, they says, we're ready. They had a little trouble with the camera and some other things, and uh, I did it, and, and I, anyway, from George and Russ, after the movie was made, the first time it was shown, and Russ will hear this part, we got, he, says, he called me at the station, he said, listen, I got a print of the movie, but I'm not allowed to show it. Duquesne University was going on mid-break, and on the mid-break, we'll go down and show it to them and get a reaction, see what they think. So that happened, I went, and they went crazy. And it was the start of something big and wonderful. I met George, was with them over the years. I want Lori to tell you about George, about her off-Broadway play where he saw Lori, and it's the first time. You tell her. I actually met him, Dad, when uh, Night of the Living Dead was shown. I was in the eighth grade, That's and uh, this big limo comes to our house in Camden Court in the North Hills, and uh, we all go, and I hated watching my father's show because I never understood why people liked being afraid. I, mean, I was afraid enough, and I thought, I don't like those movies. They scare the heck out of me. But we went to somewhere in Pittsburgh. Where, do you remember where they showed that living dead? Yeah, street? right down on 6th Street across uh, from the parking lot there. Oh, okay. Warner? No, Warner. Fulton? Yeah, the Fulton. Oh, the Fulton. It was yeah. a great night. But I, I was so scared. I stayed in the, where the popcorn was the whole night. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't watch it. I think I saw the first two seconds, and I said, I'm out of here. And um, anyway, so I didn't see George for years after that, but although he would remain a friend of my father's. And I had gone to school for theater at Carnegie Mellon, where George went, actually. 
and uh, was in New York at the time, and George came to see a play that I was in called Reckless by Craig Lucas. And this character took the, took the play, it just jumped around. This woman character was, uh, just, just was on stage the whole time. And that's when George, I guess, he realized I could play a, you know, a leading lady part uh, in a film, and he started writing it for me, which is, I, I don't often say that because it sounds, you know, but I, uh, he did write it for me, which was uh, lovely. He was working on um, the first script at that time, and uh, yeah, it had a lot of uh, effects, and a lot of you probably read that script. But um, it was too too expensive to make, and then he made it more character driven, and that's when he created Sarah's character and uh, you know, the three of us. A lot of people thought it was too talky, but it was just an honor, you know, also to be in dad, to be to my dad, you know, George always said that my dad started his career because my father used to plug Night of the Living Dead on children all the time. And uh, so I was always proud of my father, and it was just a full circle, beautiful story for me. I was so proud of my dad, and, and he was proud of me. He used to come to all my plays, and... Yeah, but what she's leaving out is uh, when, when George said he saw her in the play, and he said, listen, I, he went backstage and said, let's go to dinner. He had somebody with him as a... Uh, Richard Rubenstein. Yeah, okay. And she said, well, I'll call my husband, and uh, well, they had a limit. They pick him up, they go out, and George, uh, he got the idea to do uh, Neither Living Dead, and I told a couple people here today, he told me this, so, and I know Russ knows this, but they were, he was a senior at Carnegie Mellon in uh, directing and, and drama and producing, and the boys on a Saturday night, we're sitting around and enjoying the malt, and he says, guess what, Bill? He said, you were running a movie with Vincent Price, Last Man on Earth. He says, we watched that and said, we can make a better movie than that. And uh, he says, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do that. Well, when he did it, they said to call him, because everybody watched Children's Theater. Anyway, that's how I met George and, and Russ, and it was a good meeting. He wrote it, and we went and filmed it, and they were terrific. They did it on a shoestring, but uh, I'm glad that he saw my daughter. They went out to dinner, and Lori, this is what I want to finish with, Lori uh, said, uh, Mr. Romero, I know you and she, something like this and he says what he said she said you were coming out to pick up my dad in the limousine the limousine driver and i did a show from four to six called the money movie every day and they said they picked me up in the limo at home because i wanted to change so I, I run home there's a stretch limousine and the, the driver said take your time you know he, got, he was early and he took Lori and my son Billy around the blocks for rides while they were killing time. And I'll tell you, I was re so she says when they meet and they're having dinner, I met you. And she sa he says, what? And she says, well, I was in the limousine. You sent out to pick up my dad. Your dad? Chilly Billy. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was the beginning of a great relationship. Just wonderful. I can't say enough nice things. Thank you. Um, one question in particular about the Night of the Living Dead remake. You were in that in the Well, I wanted to know, did they make you wait around as much for as you wait for the original movie? I didn't want to make the, uh, the sequel. I didn't want to do it, but uh, George said, you know, but for George, you'd do anything, you know, but I, I was on, like I say, on TV. I was doing then uh, the inserts to CNN locally in the tri-state area. I was on the TV from uh, five to seven. I did the inserts on the Today Show, and I said, gee, you know what, I, I just don't know what I can do. He says, well, listen, uh, think about it. So um, what do you think? You remember? 
when you did the uh, arena. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Management that day came to me, yeah. and I wanted you to pick it up. But anyway, oh, okay. my general manager came to me and says, "Hey, you're supposed to be down in, in um, Cannonsburg. They're going to redo the May." I said, "Yeah, I know." I said, "Well, it's today." Oh, I forgot. Well, after I got out of the station about one o'clock, <laughs> deja vu. I drive down and I go through the boom, 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 and I get there. And uh, Tom Savini uh, was involved, and uh, some others, and I get out of the car, and now, mind you, I got there at one o'clock, one or two o'clock, and uh, they, the station called down and said, the news was at uh, six o'clock. They said, we want you to do a live report at six o'clock. Well, I had to stay, so I stayed and we did it, but the part I did was to renew my own the spot. They had a, a helicopter coming up, but it was, to me, uh, it wasn't the same. I, I wasn't directed by George or uh, our other fella. However, uh, Tom Savini at that time was responsible for that. And, uh, but George was there and, and they, but they, they were doing everything fast. And uh, I never saw it to this day. I never saw it. But when it did come out, um, I worked for, I don't work, but AAA, we traveled through them. We went to Italy. And, uh, I, you know, I never saw it then and I never saw it since. But I understand, I don't know, it wasn't very well received. The sequel, was I it? I don't know. Yeah. I guess the fans could tell us. But, but the years uh, since, uh, it has grown. Uh, has it? Following. Oh, following. Is that right? No, I, is it holding up? Um, it's yes. Different. Hey, you know what? Out of all the remakes that we do in horror these days, a lot of them are really not that good. But this one right. is decent, and it doesn't really screw up. Amazing. Well, that's good. Good. Yeah, that's what I, I was thinking, because uh, when, when first came out, I don't know if you know this. We in Pittsburgh, it played three days. Didn't cost the money. They got the money back in three days. But they, uh, you know, I don't want to go into the background. Uh, some producers and uh, movie studios in Hollywood, they're not uh, honorable. And uh, I'll leave it at that. Uh, I just, uh, I, I, that'll be up to George ask him about the beginning days and uh, and the reviews came I thought it was going to be a big hit I mean rightly I did it was in Pittsburgh and not because it was George I talked to servicemen I got letters from all over the world from the American servicemen and teachers overseas in Rome and in Spain and they'd say most of them were little the letters they were terrific hey I didn't know you could speak German. Hey, I didn't know you could do Italian. I didn't. But it was well received. So what happens? Remember Cisco and Ebert? I don't know which is the heavy set one. Ebert. Siebert. Siebert. Ebert. Ebert. E B E R T. Roger. He came out. With, they used to be a, a, on TV national, and they were judges and saying this is a good movie. That. Well, Ebert comes on and he says, one of the worst movies I've ever seen was Night of the Living Dead. Really? And that's a true story. They didn't like Day of the Dead either. Oh, they didn't. No, no, this is the first. You, you asked George. I, most of the stuff I'm telling you, George told me. But anyway, as, anyway, he says, uh, it wasn't any good, etc., etc. Boom, boom, boom. Well, the movie took off. It was accepted. And in the next seven months, Ebert did another review. And he said, do you remember? Yeah, he changed his position. Entirely. He said, one of the best movies, uh, a show, a movie that will be setting the standards for the come. So when he said it the second time, it really took off, and it's been that way ever since. 
So George and Russ and all the folks involved and, and 